you know Smith's Garden Town really is a family business. Steve and Doug and I grew up in a house that was just right behind the nursery when we were little kids, so we were always at the business doing something, helping. Uh, I was helping my mother with the bookkeeping because uh, she did all the bookkeeping. I learned to use a tin key adder when I was just a little kid. Uh, Steve was always helping uh, Dad with the planting. Doug was helping. He set the greenhouse on fire one time. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, yes. I do remember when that. When he was little. And that's just one of the disasters we had. We had the fire that was back in the... Uh, the uh, late 50s, I guess, early 60s. Um, then the, we had the, uh, when the tornado hit out at Shepherd in 63 or 64, there was a huge hailstorm in town. And at that time, we only had one greenhouse. We were on Beverly Drive, uh, 1525 Beverly at that time. We only had that one greenhouse. And of course, it was all glass. And it broke every single pane of glass in the greenhouse and destroyed all the plants underneath and destroyed most of our trees uh, out in the uh, in the tree bed. So we had that disaster. We had the uh, disaster of the 79 tornado and, uh, and and numerous other smaller ones over the years. We had yeah we had another tornado to hit the greenhouses on on Kemp Street before the 79 tornado, as I recall. And then the big one that lasted for such a long time was the drought going from uh, 2011 till 2015. And uh, any one of these uh, episodes could have put us out of business, but somehow we just persevered. Um, our yeah, dad- we, we took out three SBA disaster loans. We took out one from the hailstone, one from the tornado, and, and one during the, during uh, the drought. drought. So thank yeah. goodness for the SBA. <laughs> <laughs> You know, um, our dad was a child of the Great Depression, and I was thinking about how many times he made do uh, repairing things with just anything that came to hand. And uh, he was legendary for repairing things with whatever uh, spit and bubble gum and duct tape that he could find. And we still find things that we go, oh, Curtis must have fixed this way back when. Uh, but he always was uh, concerned about paying the bills. He tried to be honest with his customers and he tried to be honest with the people that we did business with, people that supplied things to us. And we would go without shoes when we were little kids. It was pretty tough because he wanted to be sure that he had honestly paid all his bills before we got things that we might need. And, uh, you know, that kind of paid off. After yeah, the, it paid off after the tornado, after the tornado. because we had uh, numerous suppliers that, uh, that got in touch with us after the tornado and uh, and offered to resupply our store and just let us pay as we could um, and so that that's how we were able to reopen so quickly after the tornado i guess we were one of the first businesses in wichita falls that was totally de destroyed uh, in the tornado that was able to reopen um, more quickly than almost anybody else and you know that that reputation for honesty has uh, really stood us in good stead for all these years we have customers who have been customers of ours for well over 50 years. Uh, we have some people that we have seen in here regularly for well over 50 years, uh, and I'm on a first name basis. When we've been in tough times, our customers have come through for us. I remember at the, during the drought, we had a big sale, we were closed for several months. We didn't know if we'd be able to reopen or not. We sold everything on this place. We only had about five plants left. We sold every single thing. And I know there were people who were buying things they really didn't want or need, but they just wanted to help us out. They were trying to find a way to help us stay in business and come back from the drought. So we've had a great relationship with the people of Wichita Falls for all these many years. And a lot of those customers now are second and third uh, generation. We're dealing with the, uh, the kids and sometimes even the, the grandkids of those folks that uh, have been customers of ours for so many, many years. I, I truly think that uh, Wichita Falls is a more beautiful place because of Smith's Garden Town, because of the things that we've done over the years with the planting the trees. Our dad served on the city council and on the parks board uh, for a long time. And we saw to it that we had a lot of beauty in this uh, prairie that didn't have many trees or many flowers or uh, to, to deal with. And I look around at uh, so many of the homes that I know that we provided the plants for them and helped the people out with them. And I really think Wichita Falls wouldn't be nearly the place that it is right now without Smith's Garden Town. And you know, Dad was, um, 
he was on the city council when the tornado hit in 79. He was uh, actually mayor pro tem, and uh, so he had to deal not only with the, the, the rebuilding of the, of the nursery. And your house. And my house, but, uh, but, but also with the rebuilding of Wichita Falls. It took a tremendous amount of his time because of all the decisions that the, uh, the city council had to make immediately after the, the, the tornado uh, in order to help the city recover as quickly as, uh, as we did. You know, I'll never forget one story about how Dad would improvise. When we were little kids, I was about 10 and Steve was eight and Doug was just a baby, and we were driving to California. We were going to take a little trip and visit some big nurseries in California, and we were towing a small camping trailer, and in the middle of the Arizona desert in July, the beam, the trailer hitch, trailer hitch broke off from the frame of the trailer, and we were in danger of having that trailer roll away back down a hill and dad jumped out grabbed some rocks threw them behind the wheels of the trailer and then he just started walking out across the desert and he completely disappeared from sight i don't know if you remember i, I remember thought, <laughs> i thought maybe he was just leaving us there and it was july we had three little kids in the car crying and sweating and then in a little while he finally came back and he had a cross piece from a telephone pole and some uh, wire off a fence. And he got underneath that trailer and wired that thing back up. And so it held together till we got to the next town that had a welding shop. And then there was nobody, nobody passing, no other cars, no way, no cell phones, no way to get any help. But somehow or other, he found a way to get us out of that mess <laughs> and get the trailer fixed. <laughs> You know, our company was uh, started in 1949, or at least 1949 is the date that we use. Actually, um, my dad and, and my uncle and my uh, grandfather, C.O. Smith Sr., C.O. Smith Jr., and our dad was Curtis Smith, they, they actually had started selling plants uh, prior to 1949. Dad told us that when he was young um, that they grew gladiolus plants in their backyard and they would cut the, the gladiolus flowers and go downtown on the weekends when the, the downtown was the hub of Wichita Falls back then and they would actually sell those cut uh, gladiolus on the street corners in downtown Wichita Falls. In 49 is when our grandfather quit his job at uh, the old First National Bank and they put in a nursery in Burke Burnett. So. Uh, I remember, uh, gosh, remember when there was no falls in Wichita Falls? And uh, we built, uh, the city built the falls there on the, on the highway. And we did the landscaping yeah. on the falls. We planted all those trees and shrubs. We sodded that hill and that was one of the, <laughs> that was my, <laughs> one of the most uh, ambitious projects that we have undertaken when you're sodding a, uh, a slope that's about a 45 degree slope. We had to uh, pin each piece of sod down to the, to the slope to keep it from sliding down the hill and, in, and into the river. <laughs> and, and as I recall, it was the work was still going on um, all night long to get ready for the big opening, and it was on national TV right. when well, the uh, the mayor of Niagara Falls was here and Willard uh, Scott was Willard here. Willard Scott was here. They did a big uh, grand opening of the, turn the water on the falls on national TV, but uh, the Smith crew were there all night long, getting the landscaping ready for that. <laughs> Now, when our granddad and uncle and father started Smith's Garden Town, garden centers weren't anything like they are today. They were just a bare dirt, maybe some gravel on plants sitting on the ground. And um, dad was part of the revolution in garden centers. Don't you think that he really had a lot to do with making garden centers nice places to shop? He used to say, if a department store can have nice aisles, and a nice environment to shop in. Uh, garden centers and nurseries should, should have the same thing. Uh, he was completely self-taught. He learned everything he knew about plants just by uh, reading on it and uh, trial and error and learning to grow. He really had a passion for growing really good plants. And as you can see, um, the plants that we grow right now are, are wonderful. And they've gotten better and better over the years as we have all learned more about it. Uh, I can remember nearly every night he would be sitting in his chair reading, uh, not a novel, but he'd be reading trade magazines that had articles about how to run a better business or how to grow better plants. And that was how he taught himself so much that he imparted to us. You know, we've been in this location here on uh, Seymour Highway for almost 20 years now. We moved uh, from our location on Kemp Street 
in uh, 2000, uh, and we were, for those of you that haven't been in Wichita Falls for that long, we were located right there where Best Buy is now. We sold that property to Best Buy in uh, 2000, and we moved out, we moved our retail, uh, <coughs> Uh, our retail business out to this location on Seymour Highway. Uh, we had actually been growing our plants here for many years before that. We actually started building greenhouses in this location back in uh, 1983 and we would grow the plants here and then ship them to the retail store on Kemp. And, uh, uh, but, and then when we sold the property to Best Buy in 2000, we moved everything out here. So now our, our retail and our growing location are all in one. So when we run out of, say, red geraniums on a Saturday afternoon, all we have to do is walk about 50 feet back this way and, uh, and haul more up to the front. And it really is an advantage. I, we, we talk with a lot of garden centers all over the country, and there are very, very few who still have their growing operation right where their retail operation is. Uh, many people do not have the luxury of having that much land available. And uh, this is one of the reasons that our plants are always uh, such good specimens and in such good shape because we grow them right here. We don't have to ship them a long way. Uh, you can take them home and you know that they're well acclimated to this area and ready to go into your garden and your bedding plants and do their very best for you. Uh, we've recently been honored to be called the la in the last three years, each year we've been one of the top 100 garden centers in the United States. This is a real achievement because nearly all of the garden centers that are on this list have either multiple locations or huge locations inside big, big cities, cities of two or three million. Uh, we're one of the very few that has a single location in a town the size of Wichita Falls. And so to be in that class of one of the top 100 garden centers in the country, you know that uh, we get a lot of support from the community and we must be doing something right. We try to be as conscious as we can of our environment and being good stewards of our environment. We try to capture most of our um, runoff rainwater uh, we have three ponds out front, and the the uh, the, the greenhouse from the the, the rain uh, rainfall from the greenhouse roofs uh, is is captured and funneled into those ponds out front, and then from there we we pump the water out of those ponds to water our trees and shrubs. We also uh, these greenhouses that we're in right now are very environmental uh, environmentally friendly because we have no. Um, uh, uh, exhaust fans uh, burning electricity it's all through passive ventilation the roofs will open when it gets warm in here and let the uh, the hot air out through the roof and so we we're not uh, spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars in the summertime exhausting the hot air out of the greenhouses uh, so we we try to be good stewards of um, of our planet and uh, at the same time that we're growing all these beautiful plants that's one of the reasons that in 2011, we were named uh, the Better Business Bureau Torch Award winner for this area uh, because of our business practices, the way we deal with our customers and our suppliers and the environment. So uh, we really welcome everyone to come out and see what we're doing out here. It's, it's more than just a business. This is our passion and uh, our, our way of helping make this a beautiful community. And we've also been named the, uh, by the Baylor University School of Business, we've been named the top small business uh, in the state of Texas back in uh, 1998, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so that was one of the prestigious awards that we have uh, that we have won over the years, and it's 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 due to uh, not only the the loyalty of our customers, but also the loyalty of our employees. We have employees here that have been working for us for 20 to 30 years. Uh, several employees who have been with us for 20 to 30 years. We also have second generation employees here. We have uh, several families, not just our family, but several families that. Uh, one of the parents and then some of the kids work here and have for many years and uh, they are knowledgeable. They're here to help you. They know their stuff. So you can come in at any time on any day and get the right answers about your gardening and your lawn and landscape. And one thing you learn in business, uh, to stay in business for a long time, you can't ever stand still. Uh, we've moved, we've ex expanded. Ten years ago, we added a Wild Birds Unlimited franchise to the business, so we sell the best bird food and bird feeding products. And then just this past year, 
we added uh, the stone yard business. And so now we can be a full supply for anybody who's doing landscape and hardscapes. Yeah, and we also sell sand and gravel, road base, uh, crusher run, um, any, any kind of uh, construction type um, sand and gravel products. We, we have those, we have decorative stone, all of those things we have in bulk and all of those we can um, deliver in the local area as well. Help your local businesses and stay safe. We love you at Smith's Garden Town.